<gasps> Good morning. Oh, there's a shadow on me. Oh, we need to switch it up. Okay, there. <sighs> Welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish and this is my kitchen table. Impressive, right? I hope everything's okay in your corner of the world. I hope that you're all right. I hope your family's all right and your loved ones. You know, your loved ones aren't always your family. And I hope things are getting better for you. It's Monday. I need to film and this is my kitchen table. Hi. Everything I do is out of the house and Sometimes I don't have space, so my table ends up looking like this. There are dish towels that I just took off my loom. You guys, by the way, can you see this? Look how sweet that pattern is. So I need to cut those up so I can hem them and um, wash them and get them in my shop. There are, um, there's two dozen braids, some here. Some back there, they're separated because they're two different fibers and I don't want to get confused. I probably wouldn't, but you never know and you want to be careful. There's a bump of fiber right here because I've been separating off a new batch to dye later this week, probably tomorrow. And dye towels I just took out of the dryer. By the way, our dryer's not working, so I also get to go to the laundromat today. So I have a ton to do. I'm going to get busy and get this cleared so we can film the Diz thing. I love you guys. How are you? Today I'm going to be making a Diz with polymer clay. This is a little different from a lot of my videos, but a lot of you guys wanted one. I only use a Diz really for three different things. When I roll a bat like a cigar, I like to use a Diz to like attenuate the fiber and make roving out of it. I like to use a Diz when I'm taking combed fiber off my combs. And if I make roving on my blending board, as opposed to my drum carter, I do like to use it for the blending board because I don't know how to explain it, but someday I will do that for you guys in a video so you can see how I do it and I will explain why I do it that way. But anyways, we're gonna make a Diz today, so I gotta get this cleaned up. Are you serious right now, Trish? What can I tell you guys? Creativity is very messy. My mom used to say that. Creative people are messy and it made me feel a lot better. To his credit, John never complains. He's just like, whatever, we hardly ever eat at the table anyways. Let's go. Okay, I'm finally ready. My table's cleaned off almost. A few weeks ago, I did a video where I rolled up a bat because I personally like to turn bats into roving. I rolled it up like kind of like a cigar 
and then I drafted it through one of the holes, the biggest hole. Sorry, it shines because it's got, hang on, in my did. Okay, so as I draft it through the biggest hole, looks like a little face, kind of, in my diz. I made this diz. The reason I made one is because I went to a fiber festival. There's one in Michigan that's only maybe an hour-ish away from me, and you can camp at the fairgrounds where it's held, which is really cool. And um, I was looking at them while I was there. I've had a few other DIY ones, and... They're expensive. They're crazy expensive for what they are. And I was like, I'm not paying that kind of money. I want to spend that money on wool. Hello. So I made one at home. Okay, sorry. We used to use polymer clay with our kids for fun. So don't do this with tiny kids though, because this is toxic. And so I still had a bunch of it. And that's all the tools are kind of messy because we used to use them with the kids and blah, blah, blah. But you don't need very much stuff to do this. So you do need some polymer clay. I will link to the kind that I like on Amazon so that you can get some if you want. I buy it in like the bigger blocks now. I like to tint it myself and change the colors myself. And if you wanna buy, you can actually buy it in, oh my God, I almost touched my razor blade. You can buy it in packages like this big and this isn't like enough for probably five or more of the Dizzes's. <laughs> and it was $1.29 at a store that's no longer open. But it's probably like two bucks now. So it's easy to get. They have it at Walmart. They have it at my Walmart anyway. It's probably a limited selection of colors. So you need some polymer clay. You don't need this, but I am gonna use some alcohol ink I stamped too. You guys know I have a million hobbies. And you can use this to dye the polymer clay. I think I'm gonna dye it purple or pink. I was looking for like a raspberry, okay. So you can use these to change the color of polymer clay. Oops. And you'll need something to roll it out with. I have a pasta machine that we use with the kids and that's what I'm gonna use, but you can get by with like a dowel, um, this is an acrylic roller, like a kid's clay roller, but don't use anything you're gonna use for food because it is not food safe. Definitely not food safe. In fact, I think it's toxic before you bake it. Look it up if you're gonna do this with your kids so that you can be safe. You need something to cut it out. So I'm gonna make another round one. I use one of these little mason jars that I actually use for candles. Um, again, you just don't want to use something that you use for food. And I need one piece of wire. I'm gonna use this, but you can totally use a paper clip. That's why I keep this in here, because I use it all the time. One more thing. I'll probably use a sheet of, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'll probably use a sheet of rose gold leaf. Ugh, look, I ripped a sheet all up. I mean to, but we'll see because that's only if I use the transparent clay. If I use the pearl clay, I won't do that. We're kind of gonna go similar to this, but it won't be identical. I'm gonna start with some transparent Primo. Is it transparent? Yep, translucid slash transparent Primo Sculpey. They used to be two different brands. And I'm just gonna cut a small chunk off. So I'm gonna start um, focusing down on my workspace now. All right, so first my workspace is just a little bit dirty. I'm gonna quick make sure there's nothing that's gonna come off in my clay. Be careful when you're using these tools. I also have like a little paring knife that I just keep in with my polymer clay to make sure I never use it. It's just like the cheapest paring knife you could ever find. I'm just gonna cut off a slice that's about Mm, three eighths of an inch thick. Um, if you're gonna just use a roller, you can just roll it out. Okay, what happens with this stuff is you just need to kind of work it to make it softer and warm it up a little bit. So you can work with your hands. There's a lot of stuff you can do. If, if you have a pasta roller, you can just roll it out with that. So that's what I'm gonna do because it is much easier. 
So it comes out in pieces the first time. It just kind of like breaks apart because I didn't condition it yet by warming it up and moving it around. I don't really mind that. I just keep putting it, pushing it together and putting it back through. Okay. And that's how I did my nails was in college. And she brought home the idea of using her cafe. Okay. So it's very soft now, it's conditioned. I can just squish it with my fingers if I want to. Um, okay, so I've realized I did not cut off quite enough. That's the thickness I want it. So I'm gonna cut off a little more and condition it and combine them into one chunk. Okay, so that's far enough along. I'm gonna combine these now, but before I do, I'm gonna add some al alcohol ink to it to tint it. And it's not, um, it's not transparent really until you bake it. Even then it's not completely clear like a piece of glass. It's more translucent than actually transparent. So I think I'm gonna go with, this is Pink Passion. That seems fitting for Valentine's Day coming up. This is gonna get all over me, I promise you. <laughs> but you guys know I do not shy away from getting dye or ink on me. I just don't worry about it. It's going to be squeezing all over the place. Okay. Ooh, look at that color though. And it's on the rollers now, so it'll come off on the outside too, which is totally fine. You guys have got to be like, Trish, come on, seriously. All these tools, you always have all these tools. I have crafted a lot through the years and I have gotten rid of a lot too, but you know how you always know somebody who just buys tons of tools and never uses them? That is like totally not me. I get rid of the ones that I don't use if I do buy one that I don't use. gosh I'm really liking this color and um, I've gotten rid of whatever you guys see where you're like oh Trish holy cow you have so much stuff I do have so much stuff but I'm gonna wipe it off my finger onto there I actually use my stuff like I'm crafting almost every day isn't that crazy that's nutty okay so I really like where I am with this. I'm gonna go through one more time and I'm gonna go this way. So I'm gonna check right now if this is big enough. Yep, just. Next, I told you guys I might use a sheet of leaf I'm going to I'm gonna use but I'm not gonna use the rose gold because I went with pink I'm gonna use a sheet of silver leaf okay so this is how it comes it comes in a pad of paper with like tissue paper in between see that that's my sheet of leaf so I'm gonna pull it out gently and I ripped it of course that happens don't stress and just smooth it down over my surface okay just like that this is also really cheap I got it on Amazon I'll link it I'm gonna put this with this stuff you can use it again a lot of times so I'll just put it with my leaf and get it in the bag so to get the effect that I got cut it in quarters and then you're gonna stack it It doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna crack the leaf all apart as you run it through the pasta machine. And you actually want that. So it kind of creates that almost like snake skinny kind of thing. So see how it just like all cracked apart like that? I 
love how that looks. I want to go through and do one more layer though because I want it to be kind of like trapped inside. So I'm going to actually just cut this in half and I'm going to flip it around so the straight sides are on each other. The straight cut sides are on top of each other like this. And then I'm going to run it through. Let's see, how do I want to? This way. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. What I really wanna do is make it so that I can see some of the, the cracked apart silver through the layers that are coming up through. And every time I cut it in half and stack it, I'm making more layers of that silver. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Yes, you can. Okay, so if you look right up here, you can see that the layers the underneath layers are getting close to the surface. I wanna get them up close to the surface so that they'll show, you'll be able to see these, and then when it's baked, you'll be able to see those coming up underneath. So I might have to go two more times, but we'll try one and see. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. Oh gosh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna do one more. I might regret it. All right, now you can see the silver, there's a little bit on the outside. And actually, if I hold it up to the light, you can see through it just enough to see that the I've got the layers all coming apart and they're gonna all come through. So that was pretty easy, right? Next thing you're gonna do is take whatever you're gonna use to cut it and cut straight, go straight down. Let's get those out of the way. So this is what it looks like before you bake it. Last, I just use these wires or sometimes I'll use like a, a knitting needle that's double pointed, but I'll just use this. You can also use a paper clip and make three holes. I know they look kind of rough, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna quickly go over just a little with my rolling pin. So I have three different size holes in this right now. I'm gonna pull this off my board. Now, I just got a little purple on here. Let me get it off. I'm gonna lift this and I'm actually just gonna smooth those edges out. This is what it looks like now. I am going to grab some aluminum foil. All right, so this is just regular aluminum foil from my kitchen. I'm gonna make it into a ball. And I just want a round surface on one side and a flat one on the other. So I can lay it down, cause I want this. To have a concave and a convex side like my other one. And that just gives it something to kind of like curve around. Now I'm gonna put it in the oven. It's the next day. This is how it came out and you can actually see now that you can see all the layers down through the pink. You can see that silver down in there. Isn't that cool? You can like use a rotary tool buffer to like make it shiny if you want to. I love how this one turned out, so I'll just keep it like it is. I hope it was helpful. I hope somebody tries it. That little face it just cracks me up. Wait, let me get it so the bigger holes are eyes. Hilarious. And I will see you guys soon. Love you, bye.